Okay, so I'm going to um, quickly go through the graphs and domain and range of all the major trig functions. So we're going to start off with cosine of x. So we're going to use our unit circle to find to figure out what those values are. Now I'm just going to pick um, the major ones. So you know the, this would be like pi over two, and this would be you know three pi over two, etc just so you understand what these tick marks are. They're just halfway points. So for cosine, we start at 1. Um, we get to 0 at um, pi over 2. We go to negative 1. We go back to 0 and then back up. So you can find all these on the unit circle. And we talked also about how uh, cosine is even. And so the everything... Um, is completely symmetric across the y-axis. So when we graph this, you end up with this nice smooth curve. Well, our domain here is going to be all real numbers, and that's like an R with two backbones. Um, our range, you can see, we max at 1 and we minimize at negative 1. And you can see that from the unit circle. So our range is going to be from negative 1 to 1. Um, this is important for um, some of the other functions that we'll see. Um, for the sine of x, pretty similar to what we had before, except for we start at 0, because the sine of 0 is 0. We then get up to a value of 1 at pi over 2, back to 0 at pi, down to our minimum at um, 3 pi over 2, and then back to 0 here. Now, uh, sine of x we talked about is odd, meaning that it has the complete opposite answers for when we move to the other side of our y-axis. So there's origin symmetry, not y-symmetry. So here at pi over 2, we had a um, positive 1, so that means that negative pi over 2 will be negative 1. The zeros are opposite of each other as well. Um, our 3 pi over 2 is at negative 1. So negative 3 over pi over 2 would be at 1. And we're back down again. So if we draw a nice smooth curve connecting all of these, we end up with sine. It's pretty much exactly like cosine. It's just shifted a little bit. Um, and the domain and range are the same. So our domain here is all real numbers. And our range is going to be from negative 1 to 1. Okay, well... When we move to tangent, tangent is our first function that has um, that we're dividing by things. Um, because tangent is the same thing as, excuse me, it's the same thing as the sine over the cosine. So we're going to look at some important numbers here. Now at zero, the sine is zero and the cosine is one. So we have this point here. Now, what happens at pi over 2? Now, at pi over 2, the sine of pi over 2 is positive. It's a positive 1, but our cosine is 0. And we're not allowed to divide by 0. When we graph, if we divide a regular number by a 0, we end up with what's called an asymptote. And this is very important. Now, we move on to pi, and pi is going to be... Um, if we look at our numbers again, pi is, um, the cosine of pi is negative 1, but the sine is 0. So we're back to 0 again. And when we move to 3 pi over 2, the same thing that happened with our asymptote before is going to happen again, because the cosine of 3 pi over 2 is 0. So we end up with another asymptote. And we continue the same process around our circle. This is why it looks the way it does. Now, if we were to fill in more on the unit circle, you'd see that what happens with this graph is it kind of looks like one of those cubic graphs. Tangent is interesting in that it has an unlimited range, but it, but it has a finite um, domain. And I'll write this up here. So our domain for tangent, it is, we cannot be, we can't be pi over 2. So x cannot equal pi over 2 plus 
what we'll see is we'll call pi k. So k is just a multiple. So imagine it like this. So we start off at pi over 2. We're not allowed to be that. We're not allowed to be pi away from that in any direction or any multiple of pi away from that. Okay? We're not allowed. So that's what this k, this k just re stands for some number, some regular number. So you'll, that's why that looks the way it does. Now our range here is all real numbers. Because we go from as negative as possible to as positive as possible very, very quickly. But we, the value of tangent can be anything, but you can't plug anything into it, right? These are, this is what you can't plug in. You can't plug in any multiple of pi over 2. Um, so now let's look at, we have the secant. Now, secant it works pretty much the same way, because secant of x is 1 over cosine. So we can't exist anywhere where cosine is 0. So where is the cosine 0? It's at pi over 2, at 3 pi over 2, just like tangent, at negative pi over 2, at negative 3 pi over 2. Right, we have these things. So now what is this graph going to look like? Well, our next points that we're going to want to look at are when the cosine is at a minimum or a maximum. So let's look at these other points. So at, at um, negative pi, okay, at negative pi, our cosine is what? It's going to be at negative 1. So we can plot that point because 1 divided by negative 1 is just going to be that. Our cosine of 0 is 1, so 1 divided by 1 gives us this. At um, pi, our cosine again is negative 1, so we go down and we plot our point again. And so on and so forth. This is the way that this works. Well, unlike sine and cosine, what this graph does is it is the inverse. It, it does the opposite. Our cosine did this. Okay? But well, we're not doing that. It's going to exist on the outside. So it is going to look like this. It looks really strange. But there's a logic into the way that this works. Okay, our, It is the reciprocal of our cosine. And so it, they meet at only one point, and that's when 1 and cosine... Um, are the same or they're at their minimums, um, but everywhere else it's rocketing away as fast as possible. Now, the domain for this is the same as before, right? X cannot equal pi over 2 plus pi k. So um, we, can't, we can't be any of these um, values anywhere around where cosine is going to be 0. Now our range, this is important. Our range for this function is two different things, right? So we can be lower than or equal to negative 1, or we can be greater than 1. So this is why it looks the way it does, right? We can be over 1 or under negative 1, including those two numbers, but we can't be anything in between. Now, our next one is going to be cosecant of x. Cosecant of x is the same as 1 over sine of x. So with 1 over the sine of x, we have to go to the places and make our asymptotes where the sine of x equals 0. Well, the sine of x equals 0 at 0. Okay? The cosine, or the sine of x also equals that at pi, 2 pi, at negative pi, and at negative 2 pi. Now our next thing that we're going to look at is when is the sine at a max or min? Okay, well, the sine's at a maximum at pi over 2. It's at a minimum at um, 3 pi over 2. Again, it's at another minimum at negative pi over 2. And it's at a maximum at negative 3 pi over 2. So it's going to look exactly the same, but it's just shifted over. So what we see here is that our domain is where sine can't be 0. Now in this case, since we start at 0, it's x doesn't equal 0 plus pi k, which we don't even really need the 0, because 0, again, doesn't affect anything. So we're going to say x cannot equal 
pi k. I can't equal any multiple of pi, whether that be 0 or 1 pi or 2 pi or negative 1 pi or negative 2 pi. It can't be any multiple because it would create a denominator of 0. Now, our range is just like the other function, which is going to be, um, we can be less than or equal to negative 1, or we can be greater than 1. Now, our last function is going to be the cotangent of x. The cotangent of x is the same thing as the cosine over the sine. Now, in this case, we are going to look, it's going to be like the tangent graph, but instead of not being allowed, and instead of cosine not being allowed to be 0, sine can't be 0. So just like our cosecant graph that we made, all those same places are going to have asymptotes. Okay, so, um, and everywhere in the middle, we're going to have these zeros. Now, this graph, as opposed to tangent of x, is going to be slightly backwards. Okay, and our domain here is like before, x can't equal pi k, and our range is going to be all real numbers. So this is like tangent, just a little bit reversed.